I'm gonna sneeze. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video and today we're talking about how to edit the same photo five different ways. So why edit something five times? It, it all comes down to practice. If you expect to get good at anything, you need repetition. Sports, and you wanna get good at a certain play, you're gonna run drills. You're gonna practice that play over and over, so when game time comes and that scenario presents itself, you know what to do. The same thing goes with editing. How did you get the photo to look like that? You do it over and over and over and over. So a great exercise, a great drill, is to grab one photo and edit it five different ways. Black and white, flat profile, vintage, Typical like PM and how I would like to edit it and how I see Iceland and then five would be bright. All right, so let's open up Lightroom. I'm using Lightroom CC and let's start with the black and white. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll probably just drag down the saturation to start. After the saturation is dragged down, what I like to do is mess with the highlights to make sure that detail is still preserved. So bringing those down, bringing the shadows up so that the photo is still bright. I'll mess with the whites, mess with the blacks. Some clarity, a little bit of dehaze actually kind of beefens up a good black and white. I find that works really well. A little bit of a vignette. What's a black and white with a little bit of grain? I always like to isolate the subject when I'm doing a black and white, so I wanna darken the sky, darken the foreground, probably put some kind of radial mask around the subject, making everything around it darker, pulling focus into the center, and then you're left with an image that looks like this. So that would be a quick little black and white, little banger of an edit, moving on to the next one. The key with this is not spend a whole lot of time. Less is more, you don't need to overdo it. So this next one, we're looking at a flat profile. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with the curve line. I wanna bring those blacks right up, kind of make a little bit of a ramp here, adding points on that curve. I drop the highlights down, I drop the contrast down. I don't want this to pop, I don't want it to be super clear, I want it to be softer. I'm gonna bring down the saturation with my blue jacket, so it's a little too bright. Since it's Iceland, I like always adjusting the yellows to be more of an orange hue. It just looks really good, especially with this landscape. A little bit of a vignette, and this is what you get with a flat profile. Not bad, but happy with that. Moving on. For fun, why don't we go with a little bit of a vintage look? A little dirty, like it was an old negative that was found, just something lost in time. So I'm gonna start by desaturating the photo, but not all the way desaturated. I only want like 20% saturation. Then I'm gonna move that tint over to the warm side because those photos usually have that sepia tone to them. Obviously heavy on the vignette, those photos for me, when I think about them in the past, always have a real thick kind of vignette border. And what is a vintage photo without all of the grain? Texture sharpness, those types of things here are my friend. Of course, a little bit of flattening is gonna help, so lifting the blacks up on that tone curve. And you're left with something that looks like this. Now, you could probably take that even further, but as far as the exercise goes, we'll leave it there. We'll move on to the next photo, which would be my preference, how I edit, what I like and what I wanna see and how I feel this photo looks good. So with that, a lot of the same things echo. Flipping that grass from yellow to a more orange. I wanna adjust that brightness of the jacket. I wanna bring it up a little bit so it pops even more and I wanna bring that blue to a little more of a cyan. Now I wanna darken that sky so I'll probably use a bit of a gradient. I'll also, when I have that gradient selected, move it over to a blue tone so that it separates from the rest of the photo but has more color. Kinda of makes it feel a little more moody like a storm is coming since the hair is blowing in the wind. It looks very dramatic. Moving the tint towards blue a little bit more because I tend to shoot on the colder, more contrasty side of things. That's the before. That's the after. All right, now for the last photo, let's just change things up, make it opposite, go a little brighter and whiter with this one, a little more fresh. We're gonna bump the exposure, we're gonna use contrast, we're gonna lift the shadows, we're gonna make that grass not necessarily more orange, but keep it where it is, but lift the brightness of it because it dominates so much of that foreground. We're not gonna throw a vignette on it. Now, not wanting to eliminate the mood of Iceland entirely, I'm still not gonna go full saturation because I feel like dropping that saturation just a tad still makes it kind of stylized. So that's your before and that's your after. So that's something that I highly encourage you to do if you are looking to improve within photography. Pick five styles that you wanna emulate and start there. It's a great way to improve, it's a great way to practice photography, especially right now, well, the majority of us are stuck inside. Let's call them photo drills. That's it for me guys, hope you liked this video. Hit the like button if you did, subscribe if you aren't already, and, and I will see you in the next video. See ya. Just reach. Ah.